on to our first presentation, which is Toby Dynabox. Caroline uh, from Toby Dynabox, go for it. It's all yours. Hello. Let's go for it. Okay. Gonna see if it's gonna have a tantrum. Let's hope not. Working. <sighs> Music to my ears. Hello, everybody. I'm Caroline, a learning consultant with Toby Dynavox. Welcome to AAC Accommodations for Individuals with CVI. I have a theater background, and if you do too, maybe you are familiar with the concept of a speed run, which is a way of rehearsing a performance with a focus on speed, which generally helps find like trouble spots and add some urgency. And in that spirit, we are speed running today <laughs> with a jam-packed 15 minutes. So let's do it. <laughs> um, we are giving away a playground AAC sign and um, they will announce that at the end. So keep an eye out for that. When we think about how vision relates to communication, we may immediately consider things like seeing and interpreting facial expressions and gestures, ability to know where communication partners are in a room or in relationship to self, and information that you receive about word meanings through visual experience without necessarily being aware of it, which is incidental learning. But for people who are non-speaking, their communication modality, AAC, is also highly reliant on vision. So how can we best support these AAC users? It's a question I have received a lot in my job and an important one. <laughs> we are very excited to give you a sneak peek at something we are working on and will be releasing soon. It is our guide to AAC accommodations for people with CVI. Um, cortical cerebral vision impairment or CVI is a visual impairment that results from damage to the brain not to the eyes themselves. Because CVI impacts each individual differently and can change over a person's lifetime, customizations to meet their vision needs must also be individual. So in an effort to meet the needs of the community and the professionals who support people with CVI, we created this guide with tips for individualizing page sets for vision needs. This guide offers a variety of suggestions to support a diversity of vision profiles with step-by-step -step instructions for making these accommodations in TD Snap. These accommodations are based on published research and input from experts. And the guide even includes a reference list for further education, which is my favorite thing because I am a article hoarder. <laughs> so when we consider AAC and visual accommodations, one of the first things that might come to mind is what symbols to select. For people with CVI, we want to select simple symbols, meaning we want to reduce the background and visual complexity of the symbol. Some examples of that are demonstrated on this slide. Relating to complexity, we want to minimize the number of colors present in a symbol. We keep it to like three or less. We also want to use images that are easily recognizable to the individual. And remember that will vary depending on the person and their experiences. And this leads us to a common misconception about CVI, one that I held myself, is that, that high contrast symbols are required. But in fact, while the colors may help the person attend to the visual or to find it, it may not help them learn or understand the symbol. Some recent research suggests that more realistic colors may facilitate identification of items for people with CVI, including real photographs, as long as the photographs still follow the guidelines listed here. So don't feel that you're limited to only one kind of symbol or to only high contrast symbols. Um, in actuality, different symbol styles may facilitate differentiation between buttons. Be sure to discuss what symbols will best support the AAC user as a whole support team, particularly including and listening to the vision therapist or a teacher of the visually impaired and getting input from the communicator themselves. Because of the impact vision impairment can have on incidental learning, even when we select appropriate symbols, we must consider how we will teach the symbol to the person so that they can also understand the meaning of the symbol. 
People with CVI may not learn symbols automatically through exposure. We need to teach and facilitate the connection between the symbol and the meaning purposefully and explicitly. We can do this in a few different ways. We can model use of the AAC device and the symbol repeatedly in functional contexts, like during a meal, during the activity, during circle time in a school. You know, you could, for example, touch the want symbol while saying, do you want pizza? Touch go saying, do you want to go outside? We can facilitate the association between the symbol and the meaning by using motor memory. In other words, the symbol is always in the same place on the device. And each time that symbol is selected, the meaning of the symbol is reinforced. Both of these methods, both of these methods teach operational competency of the device and also the meaning of the symbol. We can also consider using salient features, an approach developed by Dr. Roman Lancey to help people with CVI recognize and attend to distinctive elements of an item in order to identify it. You can see an example here of the kitty with the whiskers, ears, and tail of the cat highlighted. Salient features may not be appropriate for everyone. Be sure to work with the person and their support team when customizing symbols and features. And it's also important to note that if you had salient features everywhere, it would make the page set too visually complex. When introducing a new symbol in a page in TD Snap, you may choose to highlight it to help direct visual attention to that new thing. So here we'll show you a little demo of how you can do that by adding a button border. You'll go up to Edit Settings, and then you will say if you want to highlight that icon Go, You'll go to style and then the button border, you're gonna change the color of that and it'll default to clear. And then we can just change it, pick whatever color. I go yellow, cause I like yellow. You can also change the thickness of it. I tend to use thin, but maybe somebody needs it to be thicker. So that's always individual. You hit done and there you go. You've got your outline. Having symbols spaced out also helps decrease the visual complexity of the page for people with CVI. A black page background, black symbol background, and button border, effectively making all the visible space black with the exception of the symbols and text, is often recommended for people with CVI. You can see here on the slide a couple of ways that might look, both for more and fewer icons, and on a page with and without the message window. You can easily remove the message window in TD Snap with the flick of a toggle button. You can also hide buttons quickly and easily using the edit tool. In the motor plan page set, you can also use the vocab filter. So let's take a look at one way we could create a more accessible display array for a person with CVI. So again, we'll go up to edit settings mode. And then we're going to go into the page set menu. And on style, this is where we can start changing a whole lot of stuff in the page set. You see the grid factor, all of these things. We're going to start with grid factor. We're going to take that up to large. So see, we increasing that space between the buttons. Then we can change the background, make it pure black. We could make it red. We can make it whatever brings joy and whatever helps with the vision. Then you'll see here, I'm changing the link visualization so that if the button links to a new button, I changed how that looks. Making it a folder reduces the visual complexity. Here with a toggle, I can bold all of the um, text and I can also scroll through and see and, and change the size of the text. I can increase the size or decrease the size. Once I have done that, then I can um, go to the buttons and then what I'm gonna do is select all of them on the page. Then I go to style and I'm going to change that button background to be the same as the background that I just made the um, whole page set grid. And I'm doing the same thing here where I'm just taking the border color out and making that clear so that we don't have any borders. And then obviously black text on black background isn't very visual. <laughs> so then we're gonna change the color of that make it white, you can make it whatever color you need to. And then when you're done, you hit done. And then you've got it. 
I just want to note here that I demonstrated how to increase font and to bold words. But to reduce visual complexity, you can also decrease the font size or remove the text entirely and only have the symbol. Or for literate AAC users, you can remove the symbol and only have the text. Remember, we're considering individual needs. And what I'm showing today is a variety of options for supporting a variety of people. If the person needs more visual feedback when they're selecting buttons, it might be helpful to visually highlight the button when they select it. And here is how you can do that. I know there is somebody here who knows that this is one of my favorite tricks <laughs> to do in AAC to help people learn. Again, we're going up to that edit settings mode. Now in the user, we're going to go to access method. We're going to change that, usually it's touch. We're gonna to change that to touch enter. Here, we're going to make sure, you'll see this opens up this whole menu. We wanna make sure the hold time is toggled on. That adds a hold to the button. Because that's not the purpose of this, I just wanna make it highlighted. I take that time all the way down to nothing. Then in highlighting, I can have the button have an outline. I can have it have an overlay of a different color, or I can also invert the color. I'm choosing overlay here, and again, you can select whatever color you would like. I went for yellow because I like yellow. I also like green, we can go green, we can go red, whatever works. Then once you have that all selected, you also can turn on this toggle for selection feedback sound. And that makes buttons that don't speak make a sound. So see there when I when I got it fully and clicked on the food and drink, that is a link button. So it doesn't make a sound. But when I because I turned on that auditory feedback, it made the click so that you could hear that you had selected the button. In terms of visually emphasizing text, we can consider bolding the word, typing the word in a preferred color, or using Roman word bubbling. You can bold change font, and increase font size of buttons for the page set within TD Snap, which we just saw in that video. You can also modify the size, color, and font, and add highlighting of the words that appear in the message window. Um, you saw in that video that I just showed, I always have it set to highlight kind of by default, so it was on there. But you can also use BoardMaker or um, a Roman word bubbling app to add Roman word bubbling to key words, like, for example, sight words for a young school age child. And then you can import that image into TD Snap. It is important to note that these text accommodations should be done selectively and intentionally for key words. If every button on the grid included all of these features, that will increase the visual complexity of the page set too much, which will make it inaccessible for the AAC user. Remember, take home message is that there is no one size fits all approach for customizing AAC for people with CVI or people in general. Interventions should be intentionally designed on an individual basis, working with the person's vision therapist, or teacher of the visually impaired and taking the person's needs, motivations, and preferences into account. This handy guide will be coming soon and will include guided questions for reflection as you are considering how to best support an AAC user with CVI. Um, I really love these questions. And it also includes a printable and fillable version of this questionnaire that you can share with members of the team. Again, work with the teacher of the visually impaired for support answering these reflection questions. Involve occupational and physical therapists if the person is having trouble accessing their device. Include the person. Remember that their vision can change over time. So you may need to repeat this regularly, but how handy is it to have this guide to be able to always come back to, have a fillable form to always come back to. This is just a preview of what the guide will offer. I encourage everyone, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I encourage you all to grab a copy and check out the full version for yourself when it is released. In the meantime, if you're ready to start customizing in TD Snap and this quick old 15 minutes, was too short to pick it up, you can scan this QR code 
And um, that will take you to the TD Snap editing guide, which will go over a lot of the um, steps that I showed you already here today. You can also go to the Learning Hub for some more in-depth TD Snap editing support. If you want to be the first to know about the CVI guide release, visit our website and be sure to sign up for our newsletter. Thank you so much for this fast and furious overview. And thank you for making working to make sure that communication is accessible for everyone. I will drop those links in the chat.